Hi, my name is Olivia Gray, and I'm going to be talking to you today about authentic leadership, and the title of my message is Taking the Mask Off. So, um, a little bit about me. I grew up in ministry, and a lesson that I would say I learned super early on as a pastor's kid was that we needed to appear perfect. Um, and this lesson is something that continued through my college years. Um, I went to a college called Southeastern University. Um, I went to a, um, a satellite campus in Georgia at a pretty big church. And um, what I discovered is that we were to be driven by how others viewed us rather than true humility and authenticity, um, which is kind of a hard pill to swallow. <laughs> but this is the reality in a lot of churches, whether or not they'd admit it. I had enough discernment to understand what was happening. Um, and I saw so much pride growing up um, in a lot of the leaders that I saw that I found myself on my knees before the Lord at a lot of our meetings, just praying that I wouldn't fall into pride and praying for him to show me what real humility looked like. Um, so all of this background gave me a really huge passion for true authentic leadership in the church. Um, so... Part of that is taking the mask off and seeing authenticity take the stage over perfection in our leadership. So why is authenticity so important in leadership? So one, it brings healing and breakthrough in our own lives. And two, authenticity um, brings healing and breakthrough to others. So um, let's start with uh, James 5.16. It says, therefore... Confess your sin to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. So in leadership, what does this look like? It does not necessarily mean we put all of our junk out on the table. We don't want worship leaders who are uh, on the stage singing about their recent breakup or um, giving some spontaneous moment about something that they're going through in their life at that moment. We don't need to be spilling our junk to everyone, but what that does mean um, is that we have someone in our lives that we can be accountable to or people in our lives that we can be accountable to. Um, and this doesn't just go for sin. Um, this goes for emotional and pressure and um, all of those stressors of life as well. Um, as leaders, we need to be healthy so that we can lead well. An empty vessel can't pour out to others. So um, we need to bring our things to God, of course, but don't neglect the people that God has put in your life. Um, they're there to help us. And even as leaders, when we're leading other people, we need to have those people in our lives as well. So um, authenticity also brings healing and breakthrough to others. Revelation 12, 11 says we will overcome by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. Um, I haven't really shared this yet, but a big part of my testimony is um, I had a five year long addiction to pornography. Uh, a lot of this was from having a mask on from feeling like I couldn't tell people what I was going through and I had to deal with it on my own because I needed people to think that I was perfect. Um, and that is not how God intends us to live our lives. So um, when the Lord first set me free from my addiction, uh, I knew really quickly after I had found healing, of course, that the Lord wanted to use my testimony to set other people free. Um, and I went to our youth pastor. So again, my dad was a pastor at this church. I went to our youth pastor at this point it had been almost six months um, since the Lord had set me free and I was getting ready to move to California. Nope. Getting ready to move to Georgia. <laughs> um, this was like 2017 and I sat down with our youth pastor. I shared my story and I said, I feel like God wants me to share this testimony. And I told him straight up, I know that there are kids in your youth group who are dealing with this issue. Um, and he told me that it was too dark, that it was too heavy and he actually said that he didn't want people to view me differently. Um, I think the example he used is he didn't want the kids to think back on our time together and view me as a different person. So basically, he took all of that shame and that freedom that I had found and tried to put that mask right back on me, tried to put that shame right back on me so that I wouldn't share my testimony and get viewed differently. Um, 
but that goes to show what we value um, in the church, which is a lot of times looking good when we're not. Um, or in my case, I had found healing. That wasn't who I was. Um, but trying to make it seem like I was perfect. Um, and so I was taught to hide my testimony. But what was crazy is that it's actually the very thing that God used um, to set other people free. When I moved to Georgia, um, the Lord asked me to be faithful and just sharing my testimony with like one person at a time. And um, there was a few people I shared my testimony with, uh, probably like six total that the Lord had prompted me to share. Um, and it actually ended up being this big breakout of all of these um, kids in leadership school, all of these college students in leadership school that had had year long um, or years long addictions to pornography. And the Lord um, set those people free. And a large part of that was because I shared my testimony. Um, so all of that's to say, I think I went a little over time, but um, it's time to take the mask off. It's time to be truly authentic as leaders. Um, if we want to see people healed and set free, which I know if you're in ministry school, that's something that you're passionate about, then we can't only let people see what they, what we want them to. Um, so I went a couple minutes over, but I'm just going to pray and we'll wrap up. So God, I thank you for, um, whoever's watching this. I thank you for their heart for leadership. I just pray that you would, um, make us passionate about telling the truth, make us passionate about confessing our sins and being healthy. Um, so I just uh, release any shame off of people um, that they're of their testimony or of anything that they've gone through that you would use it. We thank you that you're a God of breakthrough, you're a God of healing. Um, and I just pray that you would continue to use us and move in our lives. Um, thank you, God. In your name I pray, amen.